And Mr. Speaker, it's with a heavy heart uh, that I once again, in my five years in Congress, return to the House floor on this date, um, both as a father of three, a grandfather of two, and professionally an obstetrician and gynecologist. I've delivered close to 5,000 babies, and I strongly support the sanctity of life. Uh, using technology like 3D uh, ultrasound has given us a window to the unborn as a living, breathing, feeling human being. I've looked through that window with my own eyes thousands of times. I've seen human development occur at its earliest stages of a baby's life all the way through birth, which strengthens my conviction in the right to life, and have lived in a small rural community in East Tennessee and watched these children I've delivered grow up to be doctors and nurses and professionals and teachers and to have their own children and families. Life is a precious miracle from God that does begin at conception. It's our responsibility and a privilege as legislators to protect those who don't have a voice. I will always fight for the right to life because it is my conviction and belief that we're all unique creations of a God who knows us and loves us before we are even conceived. What a loving and caring God that is. Tonight we mark one of the most tragic, misguided Supreme Court cases in our nation's history, Roe versus Wade. Since 1973, more than 55 million babies have been denied the right to life. We must make our laws consistent with our science and restore full legal protections to all who are waiting to be born. If government has any legitimate function at all, it's to protect those most innocent among us. For over 30 years, Congress has prevented taxpayer-funded abortions. Unfortunately, this door has been reopened with the passage of Obamacare the largest expansion since the pivotal Roe v. Wade decision. Members who stand before you today have pledged themselves to protect those without a voice, and I look forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to ensure this promise is kept. It is only by making good on this oath that we can expect to restore the trust that the American people have in their own government, and in doing so, ensure that the door to taxpayer-funded abortion remains closed. I am glad to be here tonight on the House floor with other legislators fighting for the rights of the unborn. And Mr. Speaker, I prayerfully ask that hearts and minds are changed. And with that, I yield back my time.